Okay, so for our topical gels, we have here ideal properties. So, so of course, we would like our topical gels to be inert, compatible with other excipients or other additives. They should also be non-toxic, of course, stable at storage condition, free from microbial contamination, maintain all rheological properties of the gel, of course, economical, washable with water and free from staining nature, Convenient in handling and its application, they should also possess properties such as thixotropic, greaseless, and emollient. And then for our gels as well, we have here methods of preparation of gels. So we actually have four methods, one of which is the um, cold method. So for the cold method, in this method, the entire ingredient are mixed together to form a homogeneous mass okay so we would like to form a homogeneous mass under low temperature at about 50 degrees celsius okay so 50 degrees celsius in this polymer and penetration enhancer are mixed together to form solution a so we will make solution a Solution A, this contains polymer and penetration enhancer. Then, we also have here solution B. Solution B. For solution B, it contains the drug and then the, solu the solvent. Okay? The drug and the solvent will make up solution B. After that, with constant stirring, we are going to pour solution B to solution a that's the cold method next is the dispersion method so for dispersion method this is actually also known as your hydration method hydration method for this hydration method the polymer is dispersed over water for two hours okay so two hours until the polymer is soaked with water and then add remaining ingredients and then continuously stir until a homogeneous mass is formed. And then we also have there the chemical reaction method. So for this chemical reaction method, the gel is formed by precipitation. The gel is formed by precipitation and then there will be an interaction between, of course, the ingredients added so as to come up with the precipitate and this will now be the, uh, the gel. And then we also have their flocculation. For flocculation, gelatin is used. Okay, so flocculation... Is not commonly used, but again, in this method, gelatin is produced by adding just sufficient quantity of salt to precipitate to produce um, our gels. Okay, so basically, in flocculation, um, what's the difference between chemical reaction method and flocculation? In chemical reaction, there is complete precipitation. Complete precipitation here, flocculation, um, insufficient, insufficient precipitation, precipitation. Okay. So those are the four basic methods on how um, gels are prepared. And then we also have there are some terms related to gels. So we have here the term um, imbibition. For the term imbibition, this is taking up a certain amount of liquid without any measurable increase in volume. So you basically take up an amount of liquid, but still you have the same increase or the same amount of volume okay or volume again taking up a certain amount of liquid without any measurable increase in volume so no in 
increase in volume. On the other hand, we have here swelling. So in swelling, you are going to take up a certain amount of liquid by gel, uh, a yeah, certain amount of liquid, but there is an increase in volume. And then we also have here the term synergesis. So it occurs when the interaction between particles of the dispersed phase becomes so great that on standing, the dispersing medium is squeezed out in droplets. Hence, the gel shrinks. So again, synergesis, shrinkage of gel. Okay, there is shrinkage of gel. And then we have their general um, classification and description of gels. So it's actually in your handout, like the um, organic, inorganic, hydrogels, and organogels, the common gelling agents, and the other examples of gels that we discussed or we prepared in the laboratory, such as aluminum hydroxide gel. It will be um, your assignment to read what is written in your handout. Okay, so again, that's it and thank you so much for listening.